Okay, good day there. I'm Richard Musgrave Evans, and uh, today, guess what? I'm in Outback Australia again. This time north of Hawker in South Australia, and I'm obviously painting on Belgian linen again. This time I'm going to do something different. I'm not going to take the edges, I'm just going to take the painting right out to the edges. I'm always using palette knife, mainly this one. This is pretty much the only one I use. I sometimes drop into another one, but that's pretty much it. And uh, oil paint. Now the subject today is I've got a nice little grid crossing there and uh, then the beautiful blue ranges behind and a bit of an orange lead in here so without any further ado let's get into it okay what I've done as I do quite often before I turn the camera on is I've just worked out a composition so I've got the blue hills there I've got a fairly low horizon today because it's quite an interesting sky so I'm going to put a lot of sky in it I've basically put the darks in just to compose the picture and uh, pretty happy with the general shape that's the thing you've got to be pretty happy before you start with what you've got otherwise you're liable to end up with a crooked painting or who knows what unbalanced try and get the balance right from the beginning okay I'll make a start Take the white paint off the fingers. Right, as usual, <clears throat> go for the biggest differences. One of the reasons I like to paint on a neutral uh, linen like this, this is our clear primed linen, is when it's neutral, it actually looks a lot more like the subject before you even start. If you've got white, a pure white canvas, it's so different to what you're looking at. There's actually more work, so I like a neutral colour like so, and then I'll just go from now what are the biggest differences between that and the subject. Alright, so I think I'll try and get yeah, the foreground colour, and the, those hills are nice and blue. I might get those hills in before they change because the light is always changing. Those hills are going to kind of be the keynote today of the subject, so. It's always good to establish that early. So I've got a bit of uh, cobalt blue, magenta, and I'm mixing a bit of Viridian green just to knock it back a bit if it's getting too strong. Let's see how we go here. Yeah. A bit more red, a bit more of that beautiful magenta. See the palette knife is actually quite quick for uh, palette knife is very good for blocking in quicker than a brush, I would imagine. A bit stingy there, so I have to mix up some more. Tells me I haven't got enough paint on the palette today. I've gone a bit stingy. Just lighten the tone off this way a bit as the hills are starting to go back. Getting a bit more distance. Okay, I might just stand back and see I've got the balance right. Not too bad, I'll just blend the two different tones. I've got the two different tones of blue, that's quite light there, that's darker. I'll just get them a little bit more blended into each other. If anything, a little bit bluer at the base than at the top. Okay, now I'll go darker. There's a few shadows on that uh, middle ground hill that are darker. I like to put the shadows in first, 
best to work easier with oil paint. You can do it the other way around, but it's best to start off putting shadows in and putting the lighter tones on top of that. It's just an easier way to work, but you can work the other way as well. Sometimes I do. Once I've made a mistake later on, I'll put darks back on if I have to. Oops. Okay. Now, as I'm getting closer to the foreground, I introduce some darker tones. You can see that linen is not terribly much different than uh, some of the tones out there in the ground, so I'll leave that. But that sky at the moment is very different, so I'll get stuck into the sky, I reckon. There's a lot of high level cloud in the sky today. That's usually the sign of a front coming in, so I reckon. There's a good chance there's going to be a cold front later, so it's best to get the painting done before the clouds come in. So I'm just introducing a few of the warm, high level cloud tones. started off a bit windy which I was a bit concerned about but that wind seems to have died back a bit which is good you'll be able to hear me without all that wind disturbance that quite often happens so I'm mainly just mixing white yellow ochre and burnt sienna so far as I've gone higher I've got a little bit more yellow ochre rather than burnt sienna Well, the clouds are kind of flowing through the painting like that, so I'm trying to go with that, I like that. Okay, now I'll put a few blues. Mix, 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 mix. Goes on and on that mixing. Throwing some of that yellow acre cloud colour into the blue, which is giving it a nice pale kind of green effect, which you do have, do get quite often in the outback sky. In the lower part of the sky, that is. Like I'm saying though, you see the speed that I can put this on. I'm almost positive it's not as easy with a brush. Even though this is kind of a clumsy instrument, it's good for getting the paint on. I'm enjoying the fact there's a bit of cloud today. It's giving it a nice, interesting bit of variety. Left a bit of a gap at the moment between the two. I'll bring them together later. Between the, uh, the blue hill and the actual sky itself, there's a bit of a gap I've left at the moment, so I don't get too messy. But later on, when I'm concentrating better, I'll bring the two together. That's a bit of a darker blue than it was a second ago, and slightly more intense. Most of that yellow ochre and burnt sienna in it. Right, darker again. Oop. 
nice blob of paint on the uh, pants. No worries about that. <laughs> oh well. All part of it. I'm actually enjoying not taping the edges. I've got into a bit of a habit of taping all the edges and then peeling it off and that's quite often a nice look but well, sometimes it's nice just to go to the edges I reckon. More blue and now a bit of magenta with the mix as it gets closer to the top. so slightly darker again. Yeah. Heck, that's dark. Oh well. Been stingy on the blue mix and I've run out of blue already. I don't like to be so stingy normally, but uh, I've kind of done it. Slow. Art Spectrum tins, fantastic stuff. They are a much better way to buy paint in bulk. Same brand they are, Art Spectrum. Okay. Now I might just stand back for a minute and have a look at what I've actually done. up the draftsmanship uh, I've gone I'm standing back I realize the draftsmanship of the hills are a little bit off so better get that in now colour in the sky, it's always a problem when you get too much of that happening. One way to fix that is to come down this way. Keep the knife clean, come back down. Now those, those hills are starting to take a better shape now. Just leave it at that for now and what I'll do is I'll start working on some uh, foreground. Some of the light saltbush colour is uh, one of the biggest differences now.
So I've used a bit of that sky colour and I've thrown a bit of yellow ochre in it. It's pretty close to the saltbush colour bottle. Isn't it? It needs a bit more burnt here and a bit richer. Okay, I've got to work out what I'm going to do here about there. Just lightly touching. Constantly adjusting the colours. I'm throwing a bit of magenta and burnt sienna as I've gone further back. That's way too cold. I need a warm tone than that. Quite a warm tone there now. Some of those warmer bits in, just half mix them into this part. Okay, now throwing it two coat away, the uh, red earth is definitely missing in the painting. We need some red earth. I'm being stingy on the white as well now. Gotta get another one. This is a brand spanking new white, so I take the plastic wrapper off the top. Get myself in a bit of a mess here now, paint everywhere. Mixing up a real light tone right near the grid here. There's a real 
light tone where they put gravel on the road rather than just having the uh, red road. As you can see here in front of right in the distance there, there's the white gravelly colour. Which makes a good highlight. actually done here is I put the, the dark of the hill in first I've painted the sky up to it and actually gone slightly over the uh, over the dark hill what you can do now to clarify the uh, the edge of the hill and outback hills usually have a very clean edge on them because of the stark clean atmosphere you can get the palette knife and go from the underside into the, from the dark here go back up taking the sky off gives you a really sharp jagged edge really mimics the outback like that taking bits off like that now I'll pull the sky down to it here Sky. Use the sky colour again to clean that edge up. It's getting a bit messy just there, so. Bringing the sky back down to the edge of the hill. Okay, now I'll go for the bigger pellet knife. I have to do a little bit of blending, I won't get carried away yet. Get a 
some of the light source on. Only just touching. It's just licking the tops of the hills there, casting a bit of a shadow on the very lip. I'll leave a shadow up the top there. yellow ochre that I had before is still stuck right in there, look at that, I can't get it out, so I'm just constantly wearing it. Right, now I'm going to do a bit of smearing of this middle ground here. Only a few of the rocks and whatever, the random different colours you get in the foreground. This is a beauty, look at the size of that knife. Great for blending, great for mark making. If you purposely want to leave marks, great. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> Sting a bit of colour in there, get some action. Some random effects. Yep, yep. Back to the little knife, I'll just take a little bit of paint off here and there create a shadow, I can peel the um, light colour, the light colour that I put on I can take it back off again with this, and it goes back to the blue, so you've got the shadow, see that, shadow. Uh, more blue in that one. Those distant colours are subtle. You get the colour right, it looks real, straight up. You get the colour wrong, it looks dodgy as. But if you do get the colour right, it's actually quite easy to do then. I'm putting kind of blue green and mixing a blue green into those hills but at the same time a lot of magenta and uh, earthy browns because the distant hills, this orange colour in the foreground, as it recedes to the distance it goes more of a dusty mauve colour. Yep. 
Yep. Right. Clean that edge up a bit again. A very jagged hill on top. I'm liking that. <laughs> have the confidence to just go crazy. Clean the edge of that. There's a that, that middle ground hill. This, the edge of this knife is good for cleaning that up, like so. Taking bits of paint off again with it. Smooth that off there with a little knife again. Okay, so I can see a bit of yeah, a bit of light and shadow in here. A bit of those erosion marks. Pull them in. There's a nice rock ridges in this middle ground here coming through that are really casting a shadow, so I'll pull back to the shadow again. You can see why it's good to put the shadow tone in first. It's going to create a little bit, add a bit of shadow as well now. But you can see why it's good to put it in first because you can pull back to it. It's already there. those beautiful rocky ridges popping out. Have a look at that. Okay, so now, done that, I'm just going to clean this edge now. And what have we got here? putting in some of the, uh, I don't know if you can see them there, it's just a few little poles and that around the grid, you can feel those in. Stick a darker one in.
Ah, the good old flies. The random rock. What we got here? Let's clean up the edge of this a bit. Oops. down to it because it's a bit messy there so I've got to bring the good sky colour down to it rather than pulling up. It's quite a dirty colour there underneath, got to watch out for it. Again, had another go, you see. It was getting so messy that it was easy to get a big pallet knife, smear over the top in one big sweep, then come back in from the underside and pull the uh, pull the hill back into the sky. So I'll make up a bit of a nice shadow colour. Foreground shadow. I'll just bang some in here. Some room to play. Yeah, got 
sorts of paint and stuff going on now. It's getting to that stage where it's getting to the accent time. So there's a bit less talking goes on and a bit more looking to create the illusion of realism and the good sting. Basically it's all there but I want it to just pop a bit so I'm just looking for places to power it up a bit, get the composition flowing. The uh, palette knife clean, clean, like so. It. The wind's really picked up now, as you can probably hear on the camera. Um, all the basics are there. The last few minutes I was just trying to um, get the composition flowing by softening a few edges here and there, as well as pumping up a few bits. I think it's pretty good now, so what I'll do is uh, let you have a closer look. Alright, no worries, thank you. Okay, let's have a look what we've got here. Alright, let's pan in and have a look at some of the colours I've been using. As you can see, I like to pull out all the subtle colours I can find, even on a midday shot as this one. I've got the, uh, let's have a close-up, you'll see there's a lot of colour, colour variances. Warm and cool contrast, slide of the palette knife. If you look in the distance, you'll see the oranges and magentas have been half mixed together, along with nice blue shadows. And then the sky, of course, has got those subtle tones of warm and cool. Anyway, uh, let's pan out and just have a look at the basic overall effect. Well, there you go. No worries. Thank you. Okay, I hope you liked that. And uh, to see more movies just the same or hopefully better, don't forget to subscribe and uh, tell all your friends about it and uh, spread the good word. Until next time, see you down the track. Cheers.